Hi, I'm Dee. I'm Jose. And we're your token theater friends, people who love theater so much that we will see a show four times. And by we, I mean this one. I mean Jose. Because today we're talking about a show that Jose has seen four times. What are we talking about? I would see it every week if I could. We are going to talk to two of the cast members from the incredible Come From Away. The Tony winning musical is about what happened on 9-11 when hundreds of lives were diverted to the small town of Gander in New Maryland. And what happened when all the strangers in the town welcomed all the people who came from away. It's a show about kindness and about how we we need to stop being so shitty to each other. Ah, uh, no, we need to be nicer. You have to be nicer to me, Jose. I, I'm very <laughs> nice. We are going to have Cesar Samayoa and Sharon Whitley, who are two members of the company who have been with the show since it started in La Jolla. Four years. And the show's about to celebrate its astonishing thousand performance. So let's go listen to what Cesar and Sharon had to say. Sharon, Cesar, I'm so excited that you're here. I, uh, I've seen the show many times, and every time that I've seen the show, it's so incredible to realize that it speaks to something so of the moment. Like the first time I saw it, obviously, it was 9-11, and Chilling, and just seeing it last week, the way that several uh, lines land was, I mean, I wanted to solve the entire time. So what's it like for the two of you being in a show that's so, uh, I don't like the word timely, but it's timely and, and urgent? You, you can go ahead. I, I think we were talking about this last night. You know, when we first started the show, we just had no idea. Yeah. And, even mm -hmm. last night, this is four years into it for yeah. both of us, oh. and we keep on saying, can you believe what has happened yeah. with this show? You know, we just had our Australian company open this it's past company week. Number mm -hmm. Company number five. Company number five. Hilarious. <laughs> <We> <laughs> there are yeah. five other Kevins and five other Dianes running around, or yeah. four other plus all under says It's crazy yeah. to think, and that sometimes to even just see the pictures, <laughs> I'm like, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's been astounding. life changing yes. for all of us. Yeah. And to think that we started in this little rehearsal studio in La Jolla, California, I think with this fit company, um, someone said because of where it takes place around the world that the sun never sets on Come From Away, which I love so much <laughs> to hear that That's there's amazing. always a Come From Away like performing <laughs> at some point during the day. And I think it's really cool. You know, people often ask us why there's still so many original company members. There's nine of the 12 of us are still there. And I think you'd be, I mean, I don't have any statistics on that or anything, but honestly, I, I would be interested to know what other casts have stayed intact the way ours has. I think that it is mostly the show, and then a lot the people, and also just the experience of creating it and and meeting the people at the stage door, which is really a truly different experience, certainly than anything you know I've ever had, or I'm sure that you've ever had. You go yeah. out and normally you just sort of sign your name, your name, and they tell you how pretty your voice is, or you know, I like your hair. You mm -hmm. know, where here you come out and people have obviously been visibly moved by what happened, and and you have to just sort of stand and be with them and let them speak to you about what their experience was. And that's, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't smack of the kind of sort of narcissism that sometimes you can feel, I can feel that way at least when you go out to the stage door and, and you start to feel almost like um, Mickey Mouse at Disney World, like people <laughs> just want the opportunity to take your picture. And there's plenty of that too, but mm -hmm. there's such, um, People come with their own stories, and so it's 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 it feels deep. 
we're here because we're celebrating the 1,000th performance of Come From Away on Broadway. <laughs> but I know for the both of you, I don't know how many times you've performed the show since, you know, La Jolla in like 2016. Right. So I'm sure more than... Both of us are well times. over a thousand. Yeah, yeah. Like well yeah. over a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did I don't you... even know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've celebrated our sal- our individual thousand performances all at different times based on vacations mm-hmm. and whatever. Yeah. And so now we're just like over a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like prison where you keep keep like a little check mark. What can you imagine? One of our stage managers does like keep it on her phone. Like if you want to know what show you're on, she'll be like, oh, I can tell you. (laughs) But, and how do you keep it fresh for yourself? Like, more than a thousand performances in because it's it's new to the audience every night, but it's Mm. not new new to you. I mean, for me, I think, I mean, this cast... Honestly, is is pretty astonishing. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I I crack up and I I yeah. get deeply moved yeah. every night yeah. watching my fellow cast members do scenes that I've seen now over a thousand times, right. and I will still find it uh, very funny. I will still find it fresh. I will still find mm-hmm. it moving. Mm-hmm. Like looking at our cast mm-hmm. members in the eye and saying the lines that we've said, it yeah. feels completely new. I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's because we are representing real people, yeah. and there's a deep um, kind of respect and almost honor that goes with that. You know, I, I personally feel that I have to do my best, you know, in order to represent this community and yeah. these people. Uh, I think that part of it too is because we've all done it for so long mm-hmm. that the standard is so high, and that none of us walk up like on a Wednesday matinee. And are we standing in the wings and saying, like, I'm so tired, right. or I'm over it. Like, that language isn't allowed. It yeah. really isn't. And if somebody goes there, we kind of check it. Yeah. I mean, we, as we joke, but we just don't go there. We don't talk about how we're getting through. We don't talk about how long we've done the show, unless we're celebrating mm-hmm. how long we've done the show. But I think that it's just, I think our standards are high, I think that we want the show to be really good. And I'll tell you what, if I'm doing something and I'm there and I'm seeing Caesar just like dance in Screech with the same kind of energy that he danced in Screech all the way back in La Jolla and still like doing his turn and really, and then he Mm -hmm. turns around and his little twinkly eyes look right at me. (laughs) I'm not gonna mark it. I'm not. And I think that that isn't something that we've all discussed in so many terms, but there is an accountability that's held by yeah. all of us. You know, the show starts with this uh, this drum beat, and I, I always feel like it's the heartbeat of the show. And mm-hmm. no matter what you've gone through, because everyone has you know lives and have, has gone yeah. through something that morning or that afternoon, they may be tired, they may not. Yeah. But like, let me tell you, you hear that drum beat and you look at the entire cast and you just go. You better show <laughs> yeah, up. That's you just right. Go. <laughs> you got to. Although I did not live in New York during 9-11, for some really strange reason, not theater related, which is even more mind blowing to me, I ended up sitting in a communications board with the real Kevin T. Oh, wow. And I was like, I freaked out. Also, he was like, oh, I wrote the book. And I was like, like I, I died. <laughs> what I love about the show is that you know, like I was coming from a country very, very far away, and I ended up in a room with this person who is um, a character in the show. And I love how "Come From Away" makes the world feel so small, mm-hmm. and we're all like connected. And I would love if you, uh, if you're comfortable sharing about people from other countries who come to the show. And they tell you about their own 9-11 experiences, but also about how the show inspires them to go and pay it forward mm-hmm. afterwards. I've, uh, it, when, I, I love this story. It, when, I was in, when we were in D.C., this young woman uh, came up to me after the show and she said, I'm, I'm Muslim and um, I, I mean, she couldn't even really speak what she wanted to say, but, but she said, you know, my parents made me always feel that being taken aside in airports and being questioned was normal. They, uh, they normalized it for me so they wouldn't, um, so I wouldn't be scared about it. And she said, for the first time watching this show, I re- 
realized how my parents' lives had completely changed on that day. And uh, she insisted on bringing her parents to the show, and they came to the show, and the father could, I mean, I'm gonna start crying, the father couldn't even talk, like, because uh, he was so moved, he said, you didn't, this team didn't have an agenda, they just showed what it was like for different people at that time. I had a fun experience at the stage door. It's sort of related to your question, which was, I came out, and there were two women who mm. were visibly moved, um, more distraught than even normal, right? There are times when you can tell, uh, you just think something's about to come out of their mouth. And so sometimes you just kind of hold their hand and give them a minute. And so they said, um, I said, are you okay? And they said, yeah, well, both, we both lost our husbands in the towers. And I said, how was it watching the show for you? And they said, well, you know, we laughed and we cried, which is exactly what we've done every day since this happened. And they said, but now we have a new thing. We have a new idea. We're going to go to Gander because we want to meet all of the people. And they said, we want to go see where something good happened on that day. And I said, that's amazing. And then I went down the line, and there were two women there. And they had Newfoundland flags. And they said, we're from Gander. And I said, are you really? And they said, yeah. And I said, so what did you do that day? And she was, they were like, oh, nothing. I mean, you know, we just had people in for showers. And then I made a tray of sandwiches. But, you know, we didn't really do anything. And I'm like, a lot <laughs> uh, and they said yeah I mean, you know but they were just so like beaming and happy and they were the almost the exact same age as the two women that I'd met from New York and so uh, I said hold on a second I went down and I got the two women from New York and I was like come up here I said these women live in Gander and they're coming to Gander and when I left the four of them were all talking to each other and making plans and like where are you gonna stay and what are you gonna do and what's the best time of year to come and where should we go? What should we see? I thought that was just incredible. It's interesting because I hadn't seen the show until a couple weeks ago. And I've been thinking a lot about the border crisis and like people coming looking for shelter and not being given it. Mm -hmm. And the right. show is about like a, a different kind of border crisis, right. but about people who were welcomed in a land that they were, that was foreign to them. Right. And so with all the news happening about immigration, like has this show helped keep you positive about like humanity? Because for me, it reminded me like, oh, people can be kind. <laughs> I think it definitely reminds you that there's humanity that goes beyond the presidency. <laughs> like, like we are more than just what the president is saying that we're going to do. There's a whole world of people out there. And it's it's interesting. I mean, even when we were we did the concert, we did a concert version of the show in Gander before mm -hmm. we came to Broadway, and one of the performances, there were these little kids running around. We were performing in the hockey rink, mm -hmm. and so they were little. They were like two, and so first I'm a mother of two, and and sometimes we're the worst in terms of like you know why did you bring your children to this <laughs> and I had this moment of like what how odd that they're here and. Well, it turns out that they were a family of Syrian refugees that had been brought to Gander, and they have a whole, you know, system set up where they're bringing people from Syria. Well, we ended up, you know, collecting money and buying gifts for all of these families and sending them to Gander so that they can have Christmas. Wrapping parties. Wrapping parties. Buying parties. It's so. Even me on a personal level, like I have grown and learned and, and become much more aware of crossing them borders. But I think the great hope is just that we are the people. Yeah, I mean, this, mm -hmm. I mean this is, the show is basically saying that our go-to, you know, if you really let people just be themselves, is kindness. We yeah. ultimately just want to help each other out. And somehow we're in a, in a time where that is being forgotten, you know, and we're being told that we actually don't want to help each other out, which is just nonsense. Um, so it's, it's quite something to be reminded day after day, just basic human kindness. It keeps me going. I think it's changed yeah. all of us significantly. And I remember at one of the talkbacks, I think it might have been Kevin T, said, you know, basically on 9-11, everybody who was on those planes was a refugee. Gander made, a, the people of Gander made a decision to take these people in, into their homes. Yeah. People, 
from all over the world. We had no idea what was happening. Nobody knew what was happening. Nobody knew what kind of danger they could possibly be in. But they didn't make the decision to turn them away. They made the decision to bring them in. And look at what has happened. Mm -hmm. So how do we get the cats that come from away to run for government? <laughs> <laughs> Let's <laughs> well, the mayor of Gander, Claude Elliott, who was the mayor of Gander for, you know, I don't know, 120 years. I, know, I mean, it seems like, I mean, he really was, he was the mayor forever. So he finally just, cool. like, how's your back? I don't know, it's Canada, so it's obviously good. Yeah. But, um, but I'm sure everybody was like, yeah, Claude, you're doing a good job. Sure, vote for Claude. Like, no one's going to run against him. He's the best. But it was funny when he when he decided he wasn't going to be the mayor anymore. We were all like, Joel Hatch is going to have to go be the guy. Claude Elliott this year. And he was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just think I definitely have moments where uh, I have come to realize that there's a difference between talking about being kind and talking about gratitude and hashtag gratitude and having like a kind presence on social media and then there's the thing where you hold the elevator yeah. right mm -hmm. and I want to be the person who holds the elevator it's just like a lifelong challenge for me personally it's good because Sometimes people recognize me as being in the show, and I'm like, I cannot do it. Like, the person who aces out somebody for a taxi, and then getting into a cab that has, like, come from way on the top. I'm like, girl. <laughs> Having seen the show, and I've seen, I've seen you every time I've seen the show, and you were out last time I went, so I'm very sad. Stop very me. rare. <laughs> Caesar's always there. I'm shocked that it was always me. I know. <laughs> like audience member I see I see how you've changed in the performance and uh, you know like the first time I saw Diane I was like oh she reminded me of my mom and then this last time I was like Diane's pretty hot <laughs> okay now <laughs> that's right <laughs> well you know I mean, I think as the show grows and changes first of all we have different audiences and second of all um, you know, one of the new cast members is Lee McDougal uh, went back to Canada and is doing um, theater in Canada. And um, that was a very um, heartbreaking loss for me, for him to go. I mean, really, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it through. I don't know if anyone really knew if I was going to make it through. <laughs> and then I got Jim Walton. And Jimmy is um, a flirt. <laughs> Sometimes we come off stage and I'll be like, Jim, and he'll be like, <laughs> it's just adorable. It's so, that's changed me. That's changed how I play Diane. It changes how um, we interact. It's changed how we kiss. It's changed lots of things. I love Lee. I will always love Lee. I would take a bullet for Lee. If Lee ever came back to the show, I would be the first person to be like, <laughs> um, uh, but it's been really fun regrowing this relationship with Jim. So thanks for noticing. <laughs> you performed for you know Justin Trudeau, the Clintons, and which world leader smells the best? Huh. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. I have an embarrassing Justin Trudeau. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> like, thank you. We all took a, a group photo at the end of the I show. About this. Yeah, we all took a group photo at the end of the show, and thank you, God, that Justin happened to be standing right in front of me when he came. So he turned around, and I, you know, I was just enamored. You know, I just didn't know what to do. He has yeah. that charisma. You he know? does. He goes right up to you. He's very tall, handsome, and like goes to shake your hand. You're like, wow, like wow. You know, yeah. he just has that kind of factor to himself. So he, I'm standing behind him. I'm probably already like 10 shades of red at that <laughs> moment. And he turns around and he fixes his hair. And he's like, the hair's got to be perfect for the shot. And I said, your hair's always perfect. Like it just, like, <laughs> it just like came out. <laughs> and one of our cast members happened to take a picture at that exact moment. So it's me just like, <laughs> 
<laughs> so he's perfect. And he's like turning around with his hand in his hair, just looking like a model. And now that picture's up in our theater, yes. looking like a complete fool. So he smells great. He's That's not right. sure. So he good. smells great. I was in line to meet him, and I really was like, I don't care. I really was like, it's not, not going to bother me at all. Whatever. He's a prime minister, no big deal. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Handsome. Who cares? So I get to him, and I shake his hand like this. And there's, I have a picture of this, too. I see what <laughs> And I felt myself doing it. I was like, what are you doing? Sharon, what are you doing? But his eyes, I was like, wow. How's his biceps? <laughs> really good. <laughs> it's all really good. And I don't have a lot of shame about that story. I feel proud. <laughs> and you're speaking for all of us. Yes. If we ever met, it would be like, okay, I just need to do something. Yeah. Do something right now. It was really good. Also, Bill Clinton, when yes. I met him, I, was, I never understood it. I met so, him in person, and yeah. I was like, boy, he has got that thing. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. And he had kind of personal stories for each of us about yeah. moments in the show, and, uh, you know, that it kind of equated to his life and what he experienced on that day, and it was quite astonishing. It really was. Yeah. He was really quite something. And he said to me, he said, your accent was good. He said, you would not be here if you were in Texas. And I was like, Cute. I can't take it. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll play drama your show. I know. Anyway, Laura Bush also thought I did a good Texas accent, so I always say I have a, a bipartisan accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you brought that up because I wanted to know, you know, if you have to go and sit and update your resume on your skills, which skills uh, did you develop because of coming? I know that's not a normal yeah. skill, but that's the one I work on the most. Yeah, I mean, our, our show is so much about group play and community, yeah. and um, it certainly has gone into our lives, you know. It's like I walk into an audition room and I think about different stuff now. I think about, like, how am I going to work with this director? You know, right. like, how will I work with this team? How will I work with this Are they company nice? that, yeah. that they're forming? Because this has been such an amazing experience of kind creative, um, inspiring people, that that's kind of all I want to do now. Um, Sharon and Cesar, I'm hugging you both after we stop rolling, so you're not escaping that. Uh, would you like to invite our viewers and our listeners to come see Come From Away, and if they can, on uh, the thousand uh, performance? Oh, oh yeah. My you do it. You've got that cute face. No, my gosh. Please, come see Come From Away. We're, we're celebrating a thousand, a thousand performances of of uh, telling this beautiful story of That's right. kindness. That's right. Uh, and and a lot of us are still there. Like if you've been listening to the cast recording and maybe you were thinking, oh, they're all gone. The good news is that we are happily there. We are happily at the Schoenfeld every night. We still love the story that we're telling. Yeah. And um, I challenge you to find a show that's been running the way ours has and to find people who are still so deeply invested in the story and in the audience. Yeah. We care. So Jose, since you've seen it four times, who is your favorite character in Come From Away and why? I don't know, don't make me pick favorites. Like every time I go see it, every time I go see it, I just love someone else. Like someone, you know, like the first time I saw it, I just wanted to like, like, I don't know, like, build a statue of Jen Colella because <laughs> she was so incredible and then like every time I've seen it since I'm obsessed with the character and they're all so wonderful like I don't I don't I don't you know it's Sophie's choice mm -hmm. what well, the, the latest one I'm in love with Diane so meeting Sharon I was mm -hmm. like oh my god I was so starstruck sexy Diane and she's so cool <laughs> her voice I wanted to ask her you know she was in the closing company of cats <gasps> I didn't know that! Oh my god! And you didn't ask her about the Cats trailer? I mean, well, next time, Sharon, if you're ever back on our show, I'll talk to you about Cats. Mm, maybe next time she'll have seen it. She'll, she'll have seen the movie, and then we can compare. <laughs> but if you want to hear us talk about the Cats trailer, you can listen to our podcast. Token Theater Friends is on iTunes and wherever you get podcasts if you want more of us. And if you like our videos, feel free to comment. Let us know if 
let us know who you want us to interview and what shows, what random acts of kindness you've done recently. So thank you all for watching. And remember, theater is more fun when you take a friend and do something nice. And take them to Canada. And take them to Canada. Bye.